You are here for God. To know Him, to seek Him, to desire Him, to please Him. That's your purpose. I don't mean you're here, here in this room. You're here because this is your purpose. Without God, you have no purpose. You have no reason of being. That is your purpose. This is a question I wondered when I was very young. What is my purpose? Why am I here anyway? I, it took me a long time to find somebody with the answer to that. Why am I even breathing? When you're making decisions, young or old, those decisions should line up with knowing God and pleasing Him and preparing to be with Him. Whether it be getting a job, whether it be ha the, wh wh where you live at, where you surround yourself with what type of people, everything yeah. has to do with knowing God. Because if you're not doing that, in the end, it's for nothing. You have just, as they say in the world, you've just been spinning your wheels. You, you had no purpose whatsoever. You've been giving yourself to something that in the end will be worthless. But if you give yourself to knowing God, and you give yourself to understanding Him and preparing yourself for being with Him, you, my friend, have spent yourself for something that's going to be eternal and that cannot be taken away. We are made for God. God has made everything so that we, we may seek Him. Everything was made for a reason so that we may know God. There's nothing that's without a reason. God is, God is very reasonable. Everything he does is for a reason. See, sin is unreasonable. It just, without a reason, it just goes. Without, without thought, without reason. Just, but God has a reason for why he does everything. Why he's put everything in place. My, the last time I was speaking to you, brethren, I, I pointed out that God has placed you here for a reason. The time you were born... The time that, that, you had, that you met different people, he lined everything up for the purpose of you knowing him and coming to understand you are here tonight for a reason. God, there's nothing by chance. God has established everything. He's put it all together. And it's intricate. And it's all fitting together perfectly. God doesn't do anything where it's out of control. It's all perfect. I, I, want, I want to bring that out in this, this sermon tonight that there's nothing that is done that without a reason and that has a, a perfect fit to it. See, those who do not, those who will not see God, will, will not give God glory, they'll find any and every way to figure out how things are put together without God. They, this is just unreasonable because without God there's too many things that come apart. There's too many things that don't fit together. It's God who fits them together. Perfect. How can you explain why everything fits together perfectly without God? To those who do not believe in God, I'll just leave that question at your feet. Explain to me. Don't give me all your your, your schooling and your, your scientific evaluations and hypotheses, tell me why it all fits together without God. Nothing. That, and at the end of the day, that's what you're going to get. Nothing. You'll get a bunch of jibber-jabber, but you'll get nothing. Amen. Hebrews 1, 2 says, Hath in those last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also, he made the worlds. He made them. Without him, it could not be done. It's not possible. The creation 
is not the point. It's God the creation is pointing to. Being carnally minded, a person cannot connect creation with God. It's just not possible. You cannot live in sin and connect things with God. You may at one point be able to make some connections, but you're going to lose all those connections if you continue down your wicked ways. God will not allow you to see him and to know him while living in sin. If you've got sin in your life, get rid of it before it totally corrupts you. Run to the one, the Savior, Jesus Christ, who can help you before it's too late. It doesn't matter how small it may seem, that sin will corrupt you. And you will not be able to make these connections we're going to talk about tonight. Carnally minded will destroy a person understanding God and his ways. This will be, this will be against them. In the end, there's not going to be any excuses for why they did not know God. God didn't leave any room for excuses. He made everything so that you may know him. So in the end, in the end when you're on uh, judgment day, if someone is given an excuse for why they did not understand, why they did not know God, those excuses will be thrown out. It will be against them. It's God that's the point. God uses creation to show something about himself, to help us to point to him, to draw us to him. See those things that we cannot understand? Those are to help us to say we need God. We see that God has put them together and we need to draw near to him. We need to get ourselves away from the world so we can get the understanding, so that we can get, get the answers that we want to know so that we may know our God. It's only because of sin that man cannot make the obvious connections. These connections are obvious Amen. when you're close to God. Yeah. Yeah. See, you can't do it without God. Now, I, I, will, I will be clear right up front. Without God, they are not obvious. The connections will not be made. All those who desire to, to seek for answers will fall flat on their face without God. So I will be clear about that right up front. For the invisible things of him, the creation of the world, are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. It's clear. It's right there. But it takes God to understand it. It takes a closeness to God to be able to see it, to perceive it. It takes you, everything you got, pushing away from the world, crucifying the flesh, and seeking God to see those things which are obvious. God doesn't do anything that doesn't have to do with understanding him. It's all to bring us to understand him so that all the angels, all of his creation can understand and see him watching and that we may understand him and see him more clearly. God is the point. He is making himself known to his creation. By faith, we can see this. You can ask the smartest person, the smartest person you can find, to help you to understand all the questions that men may have about how the world came together and the universe and all the deep and, and f things that men have desired to know. You ask the smartest person and without God they come up short. Right. It is not clear to them. It doesn't matter what school they've gone to. It doesn't matter how hard they've studied science. It doesn't matter how far they've dug down. How, how far they've gone down into the ocean, they still cannot understand these things. 
You can't, it doesn't have, we can put a, a, a great mission to go to all the way to the moon. And without God, we come back with rocks. Without any more understanding that we had before. We can say, hey, you just spent billions of dollars and you give us the same thing we got here. We still don't have any more understanding. Without God, you can't understand these things. But with God, with God it's obvious connections. This is because without God, it is impossible for man to understand creation. This is for a reason. God has set all things up to see him. He will not allow man to have any understanding without being close to him. The point is to draw near to him. Hebrews 11.3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that, th that things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Through faith, we understand. You take God out, and you cannot get a clear answer about anything. Everything is just unsure, just stabbing in the dark. For since creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. It all points to the Creator. It all draws us to Him. Without God, nothing makes sense. There's not a reason for the thing. Reason? Why are we here? Why? Why was the world put together perfectly? Why? Just so I could be here? No. There's a purpose. There's a reason. It's to know God. These are things that I, I desire to know at a young age, and I can see now that there was God working in me at that young age, desiring to know, why are we here? What is the purpose? Because without God, we have no purpose. All we are doing is wandering around. We're just, we're just, just giving ourselves to things that are just going to fade away. And, and in the end, we'll, mean, we'll be meaningless. Our time has just been wasted. But all the time that we spend seeking God to know Him and to know His ways will not be meaningless. It'll, it will not fade away. It makes no sense without God. God does everything for a reason. The wisdom of the world is foolish. It can't talk about God. It can't. It, it, it doesn't understand God. It will, God will not allow those who live separate from him to understand his ways. It, he will not do it. He will not give himself to those who have no desire for him. They can talk about creation all day long. But they cannot talk about the Creator. So they are forced into coming up with a theory that doesn't have any need for God. Evolution, that we came from slime, that we evolved. I mean, the holes of evolution are so vast, it just all falls apart. But the point of it is to be able to make sense of things without God. They're trying their hardest to say, there is no God, and we'll do anything to give an answer to why we're here and what these, what these things, how everything was put together without a God. But we can see how flat it has fallen. That it has, it has you cannot mesh God with evolution. There's not, you can't put them together. What it is, is 
just trying to take God out of the picture. You cannot do it without God. You cannot make sense or reason out of anything without God. So what is our purpose? I say to those who give answers without God, answer me. What is our purpose? If it isn't to serve God, if it isn't to know God, and if, if it isn't to be with our God for eternity, what is our purpose? I still get a silence. Because there is no answer. We have no purpose without God. We are made for God. And all of creation points to God. God is the reason for everything. So this is why unrighteousness has to suppress the truth. It suppresses it. It tries to do anything to take God out of the picture. God will not allow ungodliness to continue and truth to be understood. It did baffle me for a while to see this. How the men who seem to be so wise in different areas of the world, but when it came to God and being morally just ungodly, I thought, how could someone so wise, so smart in different areas, not see these things about God? It's because if you are going to live immoral, you're going to live a sinful life, in any area, God will take the understanding away from you. I've seen it happen. I've seen men and people that who have given their lives to the Lord. And somewhere along the line, they got their eyes off of the Lord and onto something else that may have not seemed to be a, a huge gross sin, I guess you could say. But it was, a, it was a point that drew them away. And it came a time where what they, the understanding that they did have no longer had any more. God took that understanding away from them. This is what I want to talk about tonight. Is Part of this is that we do not want to let anything separate us from our God. If there's any area of our life that may be a stumbling for us, that may be, get rid of it. Brother Tony talked about this morning. Separate yourself from it. Whatever, whatever you got to do, because eventually... It will take the understanding that you have of God. It will take it away from you. It will steal it from you, rob you. We cannot continue in sin and be close to God. And all understanding is with God. He's where we get our understanding from. So you cannot continue with understanding and continue in sin. It's got to be put away and you got to run to God. You have some understanding that pertains to this world, but it is perverted and meaningless without God. What good is it anyway without God? In the end, if you're not with God, your creator, what does it mean that the things that you have given yourself for? If you do not understand God and in the end you're not with your God, it means nothing. There is no point without God. The point is to know God and to continue with him eternally. God shall st send strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12. That is the end for those who do not seek God but seek their own pleasure. They're damned. Now see, if you really love someone, this is, a, this is what you preach. You don't preach that God loves you just no, no matter what you do. You preach God loves those who seek Him and push sin away. Those who hate sin 
and seek God. Those who draw near to God that they may get understanding. That is love. That's preaching love. So much for do doing your own will. When God cuts you off, you're no good. You can't be used. You're worthless. See, with God, you are an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. But without God, you are utterly worthless. You have no purpose. And, the, and in the end, you're going to be discarded. That, that is what's going to happen to you. If you, you choose to seek... See, I, to me, this is so vitally important for, the, for believers to see when they're making choices, daily choices, choices that's going to affect them today and into the future. How is this going to help me to know God? Or how is this going to distance me from my God? Because in the end, if, if you're not drawn near to God and you're not with God, you're discarded. You have no purpose. God is the point. And all that do not live for God will not be used. This changes how we look at the way we do things. This changes how we look at backsliding. Backsliding? It's evil. And it's wicked. Yeah. And we don't know if the, uh, somebody who is backslidden is going to come back. You don't know, brother. If you begin down that slippery slope, if you're ever going to come back. If today you can give yourself wholeheartedly to the Lord, do it while you can. Because tomorrow is not promised to you. God has given us his word and has sent his son that we may know him. He's held nothing back. This means if someone says they do not know God, this is not because God has come up short. It's not because God has failed us. It's because something has distracted you, brother. Something has taken a hold of your heart and drawn you away from your God. All will give an account to their own ignorance on judgment day. Understanding is from God and being close to him. So ignorance is from those who have distanced themselves from God and been distracted by something else in this world that has caused them to be ignorant. I don't care if you're a doctor or if you're a plumber. That will mean nothing on judgment day. It will, what will matter is how much do you know of God. And that depends on how close you have drawn near to God. And how much you've distanced yourself from the world. Why do some excel in the Lord more than others? Is it because of their capabilities? It's because they have given themselves and drawn close to the Lord. They live closer to God and further from the world, so they've been given more understanding. You want more understanding? Distance yourself from the world and draw near to God. Amen. It sounds so simple, but see, you see how wicked sin is. Yeah. That it blinds people to the point that they can't see this. Can a person take hold of what they may be known of, that may be known of God and God will fail them? It's not possible. It's not possible to draw near to God and take hold of God and for God to come up short and fail. This is not a possibility. They have not taken hold of what may be known this is why they have come up short. And this is not innocent. His, in 
visible attributes are clearly seen. Clearly seen. Not clearly seen because you've been giving yourself to the world, but clearly seen because you have drawn clear, close to your, your God. That's why they're clear. God makes them clear because you're so close to him. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. This is much bigger than here and now, brother. Eternal power. This is this is power that's going to going to bring you all the way to glory, yeah. and it's going to continue to work in glory for eternity. Amen. God's power continues on. This power has created created all things. It sustained all things. It has not come short in any in any area. This eternal power. Just as we use things that take power, what happens when the power runs out? They're useless. See? When we're not with God, we're not connected with God, we don't get that eternal power and we become useless. Just like a child's toy with the batteries taken out the back. Useless. So it's this eternal power that we must have. And that we have had to this point. You are here today, brethren, because of this eternal power. This eternal power has sustained you. Do you think you can make it this far without the eternal power we're talking about right here? It takes power to get you from where you were to where you are today. And it's going to take power, eternal power, to get you from where you are in this room today all the way to glory. It's far from where you're sitting right now to glory. Yeah. It's a far, it's a far, but you can do it with this eternal power. It takes closeness to God, but his eternal power will, will give you what is needed to sustain you all the way to the judgment seat. Amen. When you're standing there before God on judgment day, you're going to be so glad that Jesus is on the right hand of the Father and that his eternal power has sustained you all the way to this judgment seat. There's nothing going to mean anything to you. No houses, your job, things of this world, all these things are going to be meaningless, meaningless, mean nothing at the judgment seat of Christ. When you're standing before God, the only thing you're going to care about is how much you gave yourself to understanding and knowing God and drawing near to God and His eternal power. Sin was no small thing, brethren, but God's eternal power has dealt with it. Nothing or no one can come against this eternal power that we're talking about. For the saints to make it all the way to glory without a scratch, they need this eternal power. When we look at the creation, and we see the power it takes to do all the things that God has done. We're looking at eternal power that this is talking about here in her, her scripture here. It points to the Godhead. You cannot look around and not think of the, the things that you see without pointing to the Godhead. It all points to the Godhead. Unless you are looking at something else that has drawn you downward. But everything points to God. God is making this our point of reference to where we, we look to. is to Him for all things. The ungodly look at what God has done in creation and do not see God. They scratch their heads and, think, and just know that there's something missing here. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something missing. It's God. For God's people, as we look at creation, we think of God. Scientists have used calculations that God has made to 
to set up things, to put things together and to reason things out. These are, the, these are numbers that God has come up with. But they do not give God the glory. They come up short. Men really cannot give a reason for why we are here or how we got here. God has made everything in such a way that it all points to him. Men will give an account to why they did not turn to God. After all God has done, God is perfect in all his ways and he will be justified. He will see, receive all glory in the end, brethren. Creation is not the focus, but God who with his own word, with his eternal power, he will be the focus. He is the focus. God is the power in which all life is sustained. Without God, we have no life. This power persuades men to seek God, to know him, to desire him. Why would we not seek him, brethren? Why would we not seek God? It's because something has taken a, taken a hold of the ungodly, has drawn them away. For us, he is everything. There's nothing that compares to our God. It does not take work to keep our, I mean, excuse me, it does take work to keep our gaze on the creator. But it must be done. And the longer we gaze on him, the stronger our pull, the easier it becomes. The closer we become towards God, the things of this world start to fade away. And they don't pull us as, as much as it did before. By faith we can see that God is. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Hebrews 11, 6. He is. Believing is the point. Creation points to God. He is overall with eternal power. So we see God thinking upon him, setting our minds upon him. This is reasonable, brother. What's unreasonable is living your life one minute for this world that's passing away. That's unreasonable. Sin has made the thought of men dull and without understanding. To see God more, we must live a holy life close to God. So for man not to see God, they will be without excuse, as our scripture says here. Man cannot say it was the fault of God that we are ignorant. God has made it so men may make the connection. He's made everything directed so that men may make the connection with God. God has done this. Like I said at the beginning, I understand, brethren. You can't do this without God. You can't go off into the woods and figure out God without God. It's God who has done it. But it's him that's doing this. He's making the connection. He's making the connection with everything made that we may see him, see that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This cannot come from understanding the creation, but it, it comes from a close relationship, a closeness with our God. This will cause us to draw near to God. So, brother, I, I exhort you today, whatever it is in your life that may be distant you from God, do away with it. And whatever helps you draw near to God that you may have more understanding, do whatever it takes 
to build on that. Thank you, brother.